right, so try to be quick so you guys can head off and go to lunch or something. So, um, like Evan said, my name is Tristan, and I'm looking at integrating livestock into small scale vegetable farming systems. I started this research project as an undergrad assistant and then carried on to grad school. Um, it's a three year study, and we're cooperating with three certified organic uh, farms. We have Black Hat Farms in Boulder, Colorado. So it's a fun little trip to go on a couple times a year. Um, then we have Strike Farms here in the Gallatin Valley and then 13 Mile Lamb and Wool over near Belgrade. Um, so they're pretty different in how the systems function. We basically go out and take our samples and we don't have our producers change anything. We want them just to do what they normally do. Um, Black Hat is they have quite a few different variety of livestock. Uh, they have sheep, geese, chickens, um, I'm missing hogs. hogs. Yep, and they actually utilize all their livestock to go, go out and graze crop residue and cover crops and pretty much anything you can imagine. Um, they also own two restaurants in Boulder and they actually take all their vegetables and livestock and use them in their, as products in the restaurants. Um, then we have Strike, which you guys probably know what Strike is. It's out in Gallatin Valley. Um, they used to run a co-op here. And then we have 13 Mile Lamb and Wool. And uh, Becky owns a little flock of sheep and she grows some uh, uh, squash and a couple other little things. And she's kind of got a small vegetable garden. Um, and then she utilizes her sheep to graze crop residue and then also um, sells that sheep to market and utilizes the wool as well. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to see how people run their operations a little differently from each other. Um, my job is I go out every year before grazing and I set up some grazing exposures, put out six in the field. Um, and then we measure about 10 feet off of that grazing exposure and we call that our grazing sampling area. And the reason we do that is just because the sheep kind of like to hang out right by the grazing exposures. So we want to kind of give a more representable sample. Um, and then from there, we go ahead and collect soil samples within those grazing exposures and then in the grazing sampling area. And we use those soil samples for a couple of different things. So first thing is we're just kind of doing a general soil chemical analysis, so looking at soil organic matter, carbon, nitrogen, pretty much anything you can think of. We've got like a list of 20 different things we're looking at. Um, and then the next thing we're doing is looking at bulk density, which is a measure of compaction. Um, and what we've seen is there was actually, so we, we just finished up our second year, we're moving into our third year of the project. So from year one to year two, uh, we saw that there was a little bit of a decrease in bulk density, which means that the soil is less compact. So the higher the bulk density is, the more compact the soil is. Um, but that was just between years, we didn't see any differences between the grazed versus the ungrazed, which makes a little bit of sense. Um, our producers actually go out and till and then we soil sample. So we're pretty much resetting the entire system. Um, and then we also use those soil samples to send off to a lab where they do a DNA analysis for us. Um, and then we, we just recently, pull my sheet out here. Um, we just recently got results back for that. Um, and basically if you look on the back here, this nice pretty graph, um, those three groupings on that chart are different species of microbes and they're actually uh, collecting around the certain farms. So you can see that the farms are very different from each other, what types of species of microbes are out there. <clears throat> but that's typical of what you're going to see is the different microbes are going to collect around the types of farms that they're at. Um, we did see that, so in 2017, we took a pre-grazed sample at all of our farms. So this is before any sheep were ever put out on these plots. And we saw that uh, there's actually less richness, so that's the number of microbe species detected in the soil, um, and less di alpha diversity, which is ri richness and evenness of the species in the grazed, um, in the pre-grazed versus the grazed and ungrazed plots. So before we put any sheep out on any of these plots, um, they actually had less diversity in the amount of microbes that were in the soil versus the next year in 2018 and put sheep out on the ground. Um, we didn't really see much of a difference in diversity between the grazed versus ungrazed. And uh, again, it's because we do till um, and then collect our soil samples. Uh, another thing is, is we really don't understand completely how far microbes are willing to travel through the soil. 
So another thing is, is maybe our exposures are too small and those microbes are still just kind of doing whatever they want. So it's something else we're kind of considering too. Um, and then other than that, uh, you can kind of see the front. I've got a good just graphic of what the grazing exposures look like. Uh, we've collected some pretty cool produce. It was kind of fun to go down to Colorado and see what they're growing there. Um, some similar things is here. They can grow tomatillos and potatoes, um, a lot of tomatoes and a lot of peppers. So they have a couple different varieties of peppers. Um, they're trying to grow peanuts, which is kind of fun. They, nothing has really happened yet. It's probably still a little too cold for peanuts, but it's kind of fun to see them experimenting with stuff. Um, but yeah, this is just gonna, we're getting into our third year of the project. So um, Black Cat and 13 Mile actually overwinter their sheep out on crop residue after they've harvested. Um, and then, and then uh, Strike Farms actually just grazes cover crops and then terminates them that way. Um, and once the sheep have terminated that cover crop, then they go in and till it up and then plant for the next sheep. So that's kind of what's going on. Any questions? <laughs> There's no difference. Um, <laughs> was that expected? I mean, are you bummed? Um, a little bit. <laughs> but so, soil science, is, it's kind of tricky. It's pretty... Yeah. Um, understandable to not see a difference because soil, I mean, it takes a long time for it to see any changes first off. Um, and then again, like the thing is, we just don't really understand completely how far microbes are going to move. I think the most exciting thing for me to see was that uh, prior to putting sheep on, there wasn't as much diversity uh, compared to after. I think that does show that yeah, yeah, even wonderful. though we're not seeing a difference between that exposure and that field, we are seeing a difference between sheep and no sheep, which is pretty exciting still. So, Do they all share, I mean, you, just getting to know these people, are they unusual in that they are doing this? I mean, do they stand out as in terms of produce farmers? And because there's not as much integration in livestock and produce as we would think. And so they must be unusual in their... And do they share similarities in their attitude? I don't know, I'm trying to get at something that, that makes them, why do they do it and why, why don't other people do it? Yeah, um, well, they just talk about, I mean, talking to the guy that owns Black Hat, um, the reason he does it is he just believes it's the right thing to do. No. <laughs> and that's the thing you're gonna hear a lot is, I just think it's the right thing to do. And sometimes they can find a niche for it too. I mean, he does really well. He's got two, restaurants that are yeah, like got a great you know thirty dollars a plate like for a lamb and he does really well with this i think it's kind of finding the right market for it but if you can it, it works any other questions yeah i think one of the main things we're trying to portray to people is we're not trying to convince sheep farmers to become produce farmers or 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 uh or farmers in general at all, I and mean, we're not trying to get farmers to become uh, sheep ranchers, but we're trying to find a way for people to collaborate more. So if you have both, that's great, and you're probably already trying to integrate them into your systems. If you're not, a lot of people are trying to find ways. You know, how do how do you how do you get connected as a farmer with a with a sheep rancher? And so uh, Dave can can speak a little bit about that. If, if you want sheep on your place, uh, there's a couple evidence that you can do. One is there's just in the last two or three years, there's been a Montana sheep message board established. All you gotta do is Google that and it's um, uh, it'll hook you up with people. Um, the other thing is say if you, if you have a small farm, I mean small farm in terms of not hundreds of acres, um, but say you had a produce farm here, like in the Gallatin, advertise on Craigslist for sheep or in the local newspaper. Um, contrary to what Mac was talking about earlier, there are always sheep people looking to graze something. So um, I, I think you can, can really have some success in finding sheep or goats um, to graze on your crops. Um, uh, one thing that you can do as a crop farmer is offer that person that's bringing in the animals. Uh, if you have a CSA or if you go to a farmer's market, offer them some part of your CSA or offer them a few square feet of your table at the, at the farmer's market. 
um, stipulate that they really should be there to sell their own wares, but it gives them advantage, you know, a place and opportunity to sell their their meat that they may not have, and it gives you the opportunity to get customers that might be interested in sheep or goat meat plus broccoli or something else. So it it that diversity is good for your your market too. Um, the other places you can find it is MSU County Extension. Um, they're usually on the ground, knowing uh, where you know opportunities exist for sheep, and the other way around. Uh, they know sheep producers or goat producers, and they can connect you up. Um, if you're if you want to go in a bigger uh, arena. Um, I would go to the Montana Wool Growers Association meeting in December. It's always the first week of December and just start asking. I know one person, uh, a grain farmer up on the, on the high line, that's what he did last year. And in about half an hour's worth of asking, he found someone where he could get a thousand, thousand yearling ewes um, that came to his place. So check out your goat meetings and your your cattle growers meetings, your sheep growers meetings. Um, and it's it's really worth the $100 or so that it's gonna to take to get you to get in the meeting. You know, if you find uh, a way to cycle nutrients, improve your soil and all the soil health things that you might be interested in. 